how much of an impact uh, as a business does it take for you to take a, take a stand and say, you know, these single-use plastics, it's just not good enough and 69% can't be recycled? Yeah, I mean, a good impact. I mean, I'm a, a founder, I'm 26 years in now, it's my surname on the packaging. Um, it's something that I guess we've been thinking about, it's been top of mind for a few years. The question is, when do you lead and make that decision? <laughs> Will, from King of Shades, thanks so much for coming in. My pleasure. Let's hope that this video uh, isn't banned for uh, explicit <laughs> content that we'll get into, why I even said that uh, in a second. But for the audience at home, King of Shades, what, what is it basically as a brand? Yeah, hi, so my name's Will King. I founded King of Shades back in 1993 and I shave lives. Simple as that. Nice. Around about 15 billion shaves so far. Um, originally an engineer, then worked in marketing, made redundant in 1993 and founded King of Shaves 26 years ago and we were the first men's shaving and skincare challenger brand. So when we launched back in the day, um, it was us, it was Gillette and it was Colgate Palmolive. And, and that, was, that was the competitive set. And there was those, those three. No. Those three and lack of awareness, which yeah. was the biggest challenge. But we, we grew to be the number two for many, many years shaving brand in the UK and then um, other competitors came in and we're now number three. We've been number three for about probably 10 years now. Did it get easier as time, because 93 you know, is, is, is a long time ago, right? Did it get easier as time went on to be more competitive as uh, social media started coming into the mix in, in the early to mid 2000s? Did it get that bit easier to, to be a challenger, if you want to put it that way? So. Um, when we launched, I mean, any product-based business typically takes five years to deliver a sustainable, decent turnover and a sustainable profit. And yeah. I see lots of startups that, that burn cash and burn and burn and burn and never earn. Yeah. But we were able to launch, innovate with our shaving oil, innovate with tube shave gel. I bought shave.com for $18. Bargain of the century. 1995. So he never had to pay any money to Google for, for nearly two decades. Wow. because we always rank so high on SEO. Um, and the internet was incredible. And you had obviously Twitter and Facebook launch and we were very early there. In fact, my, my idea on Facebook is facebook.com slash Will King. So that's how early oh, right. I was. <laughs> and similarly Brilliant. on Twitter. And we started selling online um, on, the, on dot .com in 1999. So that's 20 years ago. And we're now, you know, an omni-channel brand. We obviously sell online at shave.com and, and with big retailers. And, but Amazon's a huge place for us now. And, and we're, we're doing really nicely in a world of beards, which I see you're sporting today. I am. But I we am do king of beards as well. Good, good stuff. Is, is this, what well, we're going to get on to in a second, around the sustainability piece. Yeah. Is this the biggest shift in king of shaves since, since, since its you know, foundation, if you want to put it that way? Yeah, so when I launched, um, clearly back in 1993, we had product that was mainly sold in canned um, gels, aerosol powered, which yeah. had been largely banned there. They're now powered by air, but then kind of they were powered by CFCs, mm -hmm. chlorofluorocarbons. And um, over the past certainly three to five years, we've been increasingly aware of what's going on with plastic. And the fact that although plastic genu generally is recyclable, 69% of it isn't. Okay. Just because we don't have the facilities in the UK, China has stopped taking it, so we ship it off to some other country to deal with. And then in our industry, toiletries and um, cosmetics, a staggering 120 billion single items are uh, manufactured and therefore have to be disposed of each year. So that to us about 15 months ago, after microbeads were banned in face scrubs, yeah that became something that we thought is going to have a big impact. And long story short, we've just launched Code Zero, which is an aluminium cork based refillable shaving and skincare system where you, you have- We have some here. Yeah, yeah, yeah we, we've got, I've got a couple I've brought into you. It's on Indiegogo now, um, raising now, so mycodezero.com. Um, but long story short, it's an aluminium container. This is a shave stick, which is raising now, but we also have lovely lip balm, with refills coming, we yep. have moisturizers, and then with our shaving oils and shaving gels, those will be in aluminium bottles that you'll then pump. And we're aiming to then transition King of Shaves to be plastic three by 2023. 
Um, so that's obviously involving millions of units of product that we need to reset from plastic tubes, which can be recycled. Let's make this clear. They're not bad. It's just they're not recycled. And when we resupply the, um, the shave stick, you just see it's a stick and you wet your face yep. and you put it on and have a shave and then put the top back on. And then when it runs out, you get a refill and you put it back in again. And it, it, it's, the cost per shave will be very similar. It won't be more than what we're charging at the moment, but this piece of substantial... It has a nice weight. Yeah, yeah, weighty aluminium. And, and the lip balm, for example, those will last a lifetime. And I think within three to five years, or five to ten years, definitely, you're going to see a massive phase-out, clearly, of single-use plastics. And then you look at other area, other industry sectors, like Tetra Pak, clearly those look like they can be recycled, but they can't, unless specialist facilities exist. And it goes on and on and on. How much of an impact uh, as a business does it take for you to take a, take a stand and say, you know, these single-use plastics, it's just not good enough and 69% can't be recycled. How much of a, an impact does it have on you as a business to turn around and say, we're going to stop doing this and we're going to, we're going to make a change? Yeah, I mean, a good impact. I mean, I'm a, a founder. I'm 26 years in now. It's my surname on the packaging. Um, it's something that I guess we've been thinking about. It's been top of mind for a few years. The question is, when do you lead and make that decision? We wanted to, to be innovative and forward-looking in this space. That's what we're historically known for. King of Shaves has always been challenging for change, for better. But coming up with a platform that will work, that people will engage with and buy into and refill. I mean, the last thing we want is somebody to buy this once, use it once, and then put the alley container somewhere at the back of the bathroom cabinet and go back to buying a can of shave gel yeah so there's lots of comms that need to go out around this the retail consumer launch will be in june july as i said we're on indiegogo raising for it now um, with code zero there but we then need to take the learnings from this into king of shades and then come up with innovative new products in this um, code zero platform that we can then lead with and then say to others well if we can do it well you can too course and, and you want others in the industry to this isn't something you're doing from King of Shades point of view to say this is how we're going to beat the competitors in the market we're going to be more sustainable you want them to catch up yeah yeah I think so I mean when you look at somebody like Elon Musk who made some of um, Tesla's patents available so electric car manufacturers could learn from from the innovations that they've done clearly he doesn't want to be ripped off by Chinese patent knickers yeah. but nonetheless if you share um, out some of the learnings and, and certainly at the launch event which was attended by some pretty interesting people there was a talk around Code Zero becoming a platform or a standard or a kite mark and you then because we're partnering with Surfers Against Sewage the grassroots environmental charity taking ocean, you know, waste out of the seas and beaches yeah. if we come up with a range of containers and then they have a Intel Inside type of mark on them mm way I look at it is, is that there's no reason why we wouldn't share that innovation out, but there's nothing stopping anybody else doing what we've done. There's no patent protection around this. It's a refill, it just happens to be made out of metal and it happens to last a lifetime. But when you come to, and, and you know, women watching the broadcast, you'll, they'll be astonished by the amount of plastic lippies, lipsticks that they've got, all in containers, all of which get put into the recycling stream. But may not get recycled. Well, let's say, well, we know 69% won't be. And I saw a tweet this morning from a guy saying 91% isn't. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. But, but, you know, but that, this has been going on for decades. It's top of mind now because of what David Attenborough has called out with Blue Planet. Yep. And it's top of mind with what's going on with climate change and the world, you know, changing. And clearly the burning off of fossil fuels over the years has contributed to this and Plastic is obviously a byproduct of, of oil. Yeah, absolutely. And a valuable one. Massively valuable. But look, it's, it's, it's incredible what you're doing. The, apart from anything else and being sustainable, which is great, the product is, is super cool. Thank right. you. So look, thank you so much for coming in. I really appreciate it, Will. Cheers. Fantastic.